Uh, you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do, and you can still be stupid. Well, we've come to uh, nearly the end of our stay in uh, or on the south coast. While we've been here, we've uh, taken some close-up shots of the horizon. It's been great to pan out across the across, uh, sea here. We've been to Canterbury. We've uh, carried out some street promotion of Flat Earth, which has been really, really interesting, been very good. Um, but most importantly, we've carried out our drop tests and uploaded the video and we're very su surprised at the interest it's generated and we'd like to thank all those who've left a comment whether you're globy whether you're uh, a flat earther and through the video and through the comments what we've been able to do is that we've been able to formulate a better understanding on gravity learn some new concepts within physics and basically come to a better understanding on falling objects with regard to gravity, we've come to understand it simply as being a word. Gravity, to me, is just an idea that basically accounts for the observation of falling objects. We see people um, hold up objects at uh, shoulder height and then release them and the object falls down. It's gravity. But that, just, that is just the observation. You know, we've seen Neil deGrasse Tyson with his microphone. But it's just the observation of the folding object. That's gravity. It doesn't explain why the object falls down. We could propose three different ideas to account for the observation of falling objects. We could say something's pulling the object down, something's pushing the object down. Or we could say the object has an innate property by virtue of its existence and it's that what causes it to fall. But the, the big problem with everything is that each different idea cannot be proven, they cannot be disproven. By doing the, the drop test that we did, we've arrived at the idea. Each object, even though they have different values of inertia or different weights, different heaviness, lightness, whatever you want to call it. They've got to be allowed to reach maximum velocity and then we've got to find out once they've both reached their maximum velocity, it is only then that we can actually ascertain whether the objects fall at the same rate or at different rates. And this is something that a lot of people are overlooking in all of their demonstrations. When we look at the Action Lab video where he has a vac small vacuum chamber and he drops a feather and uh, a metal object, we've got to ask ourselves, have those objects reached their maximum velocity, drop velocity? I don't think they have. If we extended the height of the drop, we would see different results. This is our idea. Different objects have different values of inertia or heaviness. We could use the word inertia and heaviness synonymously. So if I have a cannonball, it's going to have an awful lot of inertia because it's heavy, heavy, it's very heavy. Whereas if I have a tennis ball, the tennis ball will have less inertia. So when they're falling through the air, the cannonball here will overcome a lot of the resistance by the air, whereas the tennis ball won't be able to do that. The thing is, is that we also have to bear in mind that each object, even though they have different values of inertia or different weights, different heaviness, lightness, whatever you want to call it. They've got to be allowed to reach that maximum velocity and then we've got to find out once they've both reached their maximum velocity, it is only then that we can actually ascertain whether the objects fall at the same rate or at different rates. We see quite often um, people having a tube maybe three foot long where they've evacuated the air and they have a metal object and a feather even and the objects fall at the same rate now, the thing what's got to be borne in mind is simply that 
we can only, the conclusions can only be attributed to that demonstration and those parameters. So we can say, well, given the limitations of our demonstration, we can say that within the four foot, three or four foot long tube, the objects appear to fall at the same rate. We cannot say that all objects fall at the same rate, just given that demonstration. That is unscientific, and that is a contrivance. Some people have mentioned uh, Brian Cox's video, where he visited the NASA vacuum chamber and saying well there you go look that's evidence that's proof that objects fall at the same rate but the, the video has been put through some kind of manipulation it's been cut it's been edited we want to see something that's uncut we want to see something that's genuine they've got enough money but they never show you genuine authentic footage it's our proposal it's our idea that heavier objects will always hit the ground first than lighter objects, given enough height is allowed for each object to reach their maximum drop velocity. This will happen in, with air resistance as we've demonstrated with our drop tests. Our drop tests are conclusive in that the heavier object in three tests have hit the ground first. And we also think that this will apply in a vacuum because the property of heaviness or if you want to use the word inertia, it's contained within the object and it has nothing to do with its external environment. So what we'd like to see is a genuine, authentic drop test. Uh, Bremen University have a drop tower over there in Germany, which is, I think, about 100 metres tall. So given the limitations, the parameters of that tower, there is no reason why drop tests cannot be carried out there and it would provide data information on whether uh, objects fall at the same rate or at uh, different rates. When I go on YouTube and I'm looking at all of this stuff relating to uh, drop tests, to me there's nothing there that proves anything. We see the Brainiacs video where they're dropping things from cranes, they drop uh, the pillowcase and the cooker, we see the ball and the cannonball, we see the car and the tractor tyre, but in all three demonstrations the heavier object has always hit the ground first. Let's just recap and finalize. It's our understanding that gravity is just an idea to account for the observation of falling objects and that's it. The explanation as to why objects fall and don't go off sideways, upways is anyone's guess. We could be asking loads and loads of questions and never have the answers. With our understanding of falling objects, the heavier objects will always hit the ground first than the lighter object, given enough height is allowed for both objects to reach their maximum drop velocity. That's just our opinion. If you think we're wrong, then feel free to go and disprove us. Bremen University have a drop tower. There is no reason why drop tests cannot be carried out there and it would provide data information on whether objects fall at the same rate or at uh, different rates. So thanks ever so much and always remember till next time if something doesn't make sense like um, people saying that objects fall at the same rate given they're only dropping them from this this height. You know, it's nonsense isn't it of course. Bye. Oh and just one more thing before I go. A lot of people seem to think that an object's rate of acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. But I've been introduced to the uh, concept of inertia, an object's heaviness, the property of an object to resist change of speed or change in direction when it is in motion. So how can we discern whether an object's rate of fall is due to gravity or just simply due to its inertia. I'll leave you with that one. The Earth isn't round, it's flat. How do you know? I've observed it in all my travels over Europe. It's flat, everywhere it's flat.